Okay, so what we're going to talk about today, very quickly, is actually adding audio to your PSA, commercial, premiere project, whatever you're doing. Now, this can be one of a couple of things. This can be music audio. This can also be uh, voiceover audio. Now, the voiceover, <clears throat> we can talk a little bit about because that, I think, can take form in two ways that are pretty simple to understand. Um, the music audio is pretty much even simpler, actually, and it's very easy to do. So, um, we have our, our PSA that, you know, that's just the shots that I was doing uh, of Ryan and, and just cutting them together. And when you have audio, the best way to do, again, it's really important to keep everything uh, organized. So, I have on uh, my desktop two songs by one of my favorite bands, Explosions in the Sky. And I'm going to take those and I'm going to uh, copy them into my folder um, that I have for my PSA. And then what I'll do is, see how I, I made a, a folder called Video, right, when we were setting this up? I'm going to make another one and I'm just going to call it Audio. Makes sense, right? And then I'll just paste these two songs in here. Now, I can decide which song I want to use later, whatever I want to do. But the cool thing is, essentially Adobe Premiere treats songs exactly the same as it does video clips. So you can cut them, you can do dissolves uh, between audio clips, all sorts of cool stuff. So if I go back into Premiere Pro and go back to my media browser, I have my video clips here, but if I go over here, you can see now that the audio file has shown up and I've got the two songs that are, are here in the, uh, in the folder, and I could listen to them and, and check. And so what I'm going to do is just kind of figure out which one I want. I, I'm just going to do uh, the first one, and I'm, I'm just going to drag that down. Now, the first thing that you'll notice is you've got a lot of audio tracks down here. You can't bring it up into the video area. You've got to bring it down into the audio area. Um, and what I like to do is, especially with a soundtrack, I will always put it down on the last audio track down here. Now, this is just me. Um, this is the way I like to work, and the reason why I like to do that is because as I bring in video tracks, you need to have space for the video tracks audio here, and that's really important. If you put your, if I were, you know, to put my um, uh, audio track up top, so let's just do that. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna drag it up. Let's just say I put it up here, okay? And then if I were to go back to my video and I were to bring in a video clip here, come on and bring it down here. If I'm not careful, I can literally just drop it in right on top of my audio and I've just lost my song. In fact, you can see it literally just cut out a big chunk right out of the middle of the song and now my song is gone. So I think the best way to, to do it <clears throat> is usually I will bring it down onto track number four. By default, when you start a Premiere Pro project, you have four tracks. So just bring it down here. And now it's actually really simple. Um, you can see the uh, you can see the waveforms down here. If you hover the scroll wheel over a track and scroll up and down, you can make that track bigger or smaller to kind of see what's going on. So that's always kind of nice. I can also kind of adjust things a little bit here. Um, the next thing you might notice about this is that it is extraordinarily long. This is a very long song. It is way longer than my audio, obviously. And so what I would want to do is start choosing the best portion of, of music for my uh, setup. <clears throat> this is one of the reasons that I usually will do audio towards the end or, depending upon what I'm doing, at the very beginning. If I know what I wanted right in the beginning of the editing process and I'm doing more of a music video style thing, I'll put my audio track right in there right away and then I can start editing to the music and kind of edit the pacing of the video clips to the music. In this case, I started editing first, in which case to understand how much music I need, I should probably be pretty close to finished with my video portion, my video editing, before I put the audio in and then I can start choosing what the best part of that is. And I can play it and it, whoa, that sounds good. So you can kind of hear the music, you can scrub back and forth with it, you can trim it just like you can 
uh, anything else. So I can take this, I can trim the audio and say I want this section here. Uh, I can trim this back here, or maybe I can go to a, you know, a different section. I can, you know, then zoom in and start playing with it. I can use any of the tools that you have on the video stuff on it. So I can do that, boom, I can cut in the middle. It's basically really simple to do. I could cut and add another section from the ending and do crossfades. There are transitions for the audio too, dissolves, so you can fade between two pieces of audio so you can actually have two sections. It's pretty cool um, and really, really easy. So let's just say I had two sections here. I'll do this and then we'll be done. <clears throat> and I wanted these two sections to blend nicer together. I can go to my effects, audio transitions, crossfades, and I like the constant power or constant gain. Just bring that in, and now you can see that what it's doing is it's fading between the two clips, nice and easy. Now, as far as voiceover is concerned, the easiest way to do a voiceover, and this is going to put me over on my time, but it's important. The easiest way to do a voiceover, <coughs> oh, that was five minute warning, okay. <coughs> so I'm not doing too bad. The easiest way to do a voiceover is to just have the person you want to do a voiceover. Now, that's the thing. It's easy to do it yourself, but if you really are going to do a voiceover, you need to stop and think. Who's got a good voice that you know? Who's got a really good speaking voice uh, who can speak well, who can read a script and speak without hesitating or sounding awkward? You know, don't just do it yourself just because it's convenient. Think about a good, what we call voice talent, right? Somebody who's got a good voice. Uh, and get them to write a script down so that they can read it. And then the easiest way to do it, and this is very low budget, but it works, is to either have them talk directly into the camera. And the way to do this is just to set the camera up in, close to them, maybe two, three feet away, uh, in a room that's quiet, so not a room like this with the air conditioner, the, you know, the heater vent running all the time, but a room that's pretty quiet. Also a room that has carpeted floors is really good. Not a room like this with hard tile. Um, you don't want a lot of echoes and bounces, uh, that sort of a thing. <clears throat> and just get them to speak your, whatever your voiceover is going to be directly into the camera. And then you can put that clip, whoops, you can put that clip into your project simply by dragging it in and then you right click on the clip and you unlink the two so now you can select the audio and the video separately and you can just delete the video by clicking in the back the backspace key and now you can put your voice over under in one of the audio tracks underneath and just have it going over top chances are that any of the audio that you have coming from your um, original clips you're probably going to mute that anyway which is this mute button right here and then lock them so that you don't, you can't alter them and you're just not going to hear them at all and then you have your voiceover or your song going over top of them. That may not be the case for everybody. Some of you may want some of your dialogue in here, but um, I think for the most part you're probably going to want to have uh, just your, your voiceover and or your song, probably both, going without the audio from the clip. So you can just hit that mute button and start editing. Um, <clears throat> and put your voiceover in. Now, if you don't want to do voiceover with a camera, you've got another couple of options. You can use an iPhone or an Android phone. There's a lot of voice recording apps, and then you just have to plug your phone into the computer, and you'll find, you have to find that audio file, and depending upon the app, it may be in a number of various places. Some apps, you can email them to yourself, um, that sort of thing, and then you just drag it again into the audio folder and drag it in just like I did the song. Um, you can buy microphones and get really high-end digital recording, but I think as I've told you before, digital audio can get very expensive. A good microphone usually runs anywhere from $700 to $1,000. Well, you know, you can get decent ones for two to three but it gets pretty pricey. So just speaking into the camera usually works really well or using an iPhone as a digital recorder are your two best ways of getting a voiceover. Are there any questions? All right then, fan stinking-tastic.